Thanks everyone for tuning in. It's really nice to have Jack Glass here on the podcast today, who is a fishing guide out of the Portland, Oregon area. And uh, I have a couple different questions for Jack to ask about his longtime guiding career. We're here at the Portland Sportsman Show, and he's doing a number of seminars on different fisheries. And first of all, Jack, I'm happy to have you, and thanks for being with me. Thank you, Lucas, for inviting me and uh, be able to chat with you a little bit about this guide industry which I have been part of. I actually started part-time in 1983 and went into full-time 1986. That's fantastic. Now, what gave you kind of the idea to go ahead and start making uh, fishing an income? You know, I I admired a a guide who we just recently lost, Bob Tolman. Here was this guy who was making a living, living on the river and taking people fishing, and I always thought that was so cool. Uh, that I was, I uh, followed his footsteps. I found a, a property to buy and moved into the river and started making my career on the river like Bob was doing. I, I admired that. And uh, so, so what fishery did you begin guiding first? Well, you know, the small streams, which I was, I, I was most familiar with, was steelhead and spring salmon fishing, and then some trout fishing, too. In my early career, I actually did trout fishing on the Deschutes River and guiding prior to even when there was a, a permitted system over there. And I had a powerboat permit when they started it and gave me one of those permits. And, uh, but primarily salmon and steelhead uh, on the smaller streams, uh, coastal streams, uh, Clackamas, Sandy Rivers, and then I moved into a home on the Sandy River. So winter steelhead and spring chinook were my main go-to things for seven months of the year. So Jack, I've had uh, the pleasure of fishing with you a couple of times, <clears throat> and you know, you always make sure to to say it's a it's not about the numbers of fish you catch, it's about the experience. Although in, in my experience, we've been able to have lights out fishing, which I'm thankful for. But I understand, you know, runs go up and down. So how do you foster that environment of, of a good experience always well you know in the northwest our, our fisheries we've got is phenomenal if you look at a, a, a nation or even world standard we have so it's so diverse and so many things to do here uh i Bob Tolman, who I admired, uh, him and I had talked about it a number of years ago about the experience that we have here in the Northwest is phenomenal. That's why we live here. Uh, yeah, we have plentiful days and then we have slow days. And I never focused on, you know, only catching fish to make the experience. So as soon as somebody in the guiding industry is focused on numbers of fish, they typically don't stay in the industry very long because it cycles so much. So sell the experience. What we have in the Northwest is unlike anywhere else in the world with the diversity and things that we've got to do here. So it's not doom and gloom. Uh, this is phenomenal what we can do here. Yeah, and you've also, it seems, stay on your toes as far as a lot of different fisheries to choose from as well. So right. you can provide a lot of different experiences. What are some other uh, fisheries besides salmon and steelhead that you do? Well, you know, I do fish walleye and smallmouth bass uh, and sturgeon. So those are three fisheries that are available to us. Uh, we can fish them seven days a week, although at certain times we are not allowed to keep sturgeon. But what a great, we had a world-class sturgeon fishery here, right here on the Columbia River, as far as uh, even though numbers have declined because of sea lion predation, it's still quite good, especially down by Astoria. It can be lights out catching down around sturgeon, uh, also up above the dams. And, and a lot of times they're shaker fish. That's fine. They tug on the line and the tug is the drug. You know that, Lucas. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we may take it for granted here as yeah. far as incredible numbers, incredible fish. And a lot of people, now, speaking of sturgeon, uh we, we all seem to go nuts over here, you know, for salmon and steelhead, and, and rightfully so, but around the globe, our most impressive fish as far as just a visual aspect would be the sturgeon. Right, exactly. The oversized sturgeon, especially, and the, the large sturgeon that are being caught down in Astoria area. Uh, a, over 50-inch fish is a common sight down there in Astoria right now. Uh, I've had people come from all over the world to fish with me on the Columbia River for sturgeon. And I'm not even, I don't even market that fishery very much. I do less sturgeon fishing now than I ever did because of the predation and lower numbers. I don't target them very much anymore, especially the big ones. Uh, I did have a couple groups last year to go target big fish, but 
uh, it, it's, it's a fishery. I want to leave them alone, basically, because I want them to, you know, replenish. Those are our, our breeders when they get over about five, six feet long. Uh, so we got to enjoy the fishery, catch and release on the smaller guys. Absolutely. Uh, I just don't target the big fish all the time like I used to. I've, I've done it, you know, been there, done that. And everybody should at least catch one oversized in their life, oversized being over six feet long. They are there in the Columbia River. Now, there's only about 10,000 of them. There's not, the last number I heard, it might be as low as seven or 8,000 now because of predation. The sea lions eat the big ones too. So, but what a fishery. It's world class. There's nothing like it. Well, I'm sure uh, the sea lions are doing a lot worse than any catch and release Jack, Jack Glass has done. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's true. It, yeah. it is true. But it's good, but, yeah. good, to, good to keep in mind. Now, tell me about yeah. um, Jeremy Wade. Yes. So. Well, you know, Jeremy Wade from uh, Animal Planet, River Monsters, had contacted me about uh, fishing for oversized sturgeon in the Columbia, and I took him like six years ago, I think it was, and that show's been aired several times. He caught six in two days of fishing. The largest was a little over nine feet, Goodness. and we got good footage and all that sort of thing. Um, I had a great experience with the guy. He was fun. At the time, that was the biggest fish he'd ever caught, and I wow. estimated around 300 pounds in, in girth and length when we measured and that figured it out but he's probably caught bigger fish since then so. wow that's incredible yeah. so you put jeremy wade on the biggest fish he had ever caught at the time at that time yeah yes. and uh, i mean that guy is a absolute legend uh to fishermen but also non-fishermen enjoy that show like crazy and so yeah we've essentially got a river monster here in the columbia river and we Absolutely. take it for granted yeah know? so well, i try not to yeah i, I don't take to. it for granted <laughs> any of our fisheries i don't take for granted here and, and one should never do that because folks what we've got here it's 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 world class there's so much diversity out in the ocean you got your bottom fish halibut uh, uh tuna to all your salmon species inland you come in you got walleye bass uh, catfish, uh, I can go on and on, uh, the diversity is here. And then when you move to high lakes, you got your kokanee, you got bull trout, you've got lake trout, you've got, you know, just, I can go on and on and on, rainbows and brown trout, and it's just amazing what we have here in the Northwest. Now let's, uh, up, upcoming spring Chinook uh, fishing, you you do a lot of seminars and put out a lot of information, help people out on spring Chinook. Now, if we were talking no specific bait, no specific lure, just colors, if you had to choose three colors for all of your baits and your plugs and your spinners and all that stuff to be for the rest of your life, what would those top three spring chinook colors be? <laughs> well, something with green, something okay. with blue, and something with red. <laughs> okay, greens, you know, blues, and reds. Yeah, yep. you know, uh, I, we can't, we've caught so many fish on blue and green tip rainbow spinners. Yep. Uh, I've done so well on the flat fish. It's chartreuse and green or, or uh, multiple green colors and, and on plugs. Uh, and then turn around and, and, and on prawns and prawns and eggs, sometimes I use a spin glow or a little spinner blade in front of those. Mm -hmm. And any of those three applications, are going to have red, green, or blue on it someplace. Awesome. awesome. And uh, just one last question for you to let you get going back to yeah. your seminars and everything. I appreciate it, Jack. Um, now, one of the things that I've noticed just fishing with you um, that I think is really cool is you're always fishing, always, always playing with something new, always playing around with something. And so what are some of the newer techniques that you've maybe started using in the last five, ten years that you hadn't used previous in your guide career? Yeah, good question. I mean, boy, the industry is ever-changing. I've seen so many things happen over the years. We'd have never thought about fishing a braided line. I remember when that came out and it started scarring all the, the eyelets on the rods because yeah. they weren't able to handle the, the, the friction of that line going through the eyelet. And, and then the triangular flashers came out. Boy, those are awesome. You know, I mean, they worked really good compared of the old Dodgers. And then now, more recently, would be the uh, 360 flashers that came out, and there's several manufacturers of them now. Uh, that's been the most recent really big change in the industry is that 360 flasher, and raised the game. It's made people a lot better anglers than they were because that thing is so effective. And learning from seminars that not only Brandon and I put on, but other people put on and learn about how to fish that thing, 
uh, it'll make you a better fisherman if you figure, you know, practice with it a little bit. Uh, that's that's one of the biggest changes. Of course, outboard motors and boats and rods and reels, line counter reels. I love line counter reels. I use them all the time. So uh, you can't beat that. That's a great application for any of our trolling applications. Not, it's not a casting reel necessarily, but for trolling in various depths huge benefit line counter reel so i can go on and on about the new industry so oh yeah, yeah. absolutely it's fun stuff it is well thank you uh, jack for being on the salmon trout sea lighter podcast uh, jack's website is team hookup fishing, guide service or team to, hookup to, and yeah, the guide or, services yeah. team hookup guide service. team hookup fishing yes. sorry yeah team hookup fishing.com check it out online and, uh, and again, thanks, thanks again, Jack, and look forward to talking to you again shortly. Or give me a call, 503-260-2315, 260-2315. I'm going to be doing spring Chinook. I'm doing winter steelhead right now. We've got springer season right around the corner, and there will be a bit of a season on the Columbia, and i got some dates open for that. Awesome.